In this video, I will show you four different options how to flash the Marlin firmware to your 3D printer. Come and join me. Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome to the Crosslink channel. I would like to help you being more successful with 3D printing. And if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Flashing the Marlin firmware, this is one of the most requested topics on this channel. Also, I do get most of the questions on this topic, so I thought it's time for an updated video about what are the options and most common issues and how to fix those when flashing the Marlin firmware. To really find the right approach for you, I encourage you to watch the entire video first and then make a decision. So let's start with the most commonly mentioned approach to flash firmware, which is using the USB cable. Let's clarify some of the background about this method first. By the way, one quick tip up front that fixes already a lot of issues with the USB method and also applies to all other methods mentioned in this and the other videos. Never flash firmware with the USB cable when it's plugged into a USB hub. Always plug in the USB cable directly in one of the computer's ports. I can assure you that that will prevent so many weird problems. Using the USB cable to flash firmware requires a piece of software being installed on your printer that's called the bootloader. And this lives inside of the 128 kilobytes of flash memory that your printer has. So I will call this the stock bootloader. Now there is a common misconception out there. Not every 3D printer comes with a bootloader pre-installed. So you might know someone and in the case of the Anit A8, I would say this might be 80% of people who are successfully using the USB cable for firmware flashing. For example, I myself always was lucky to have boards which had a bootloader. Even the latest version of the board, which is 1.7, that I just got in, has a bootloader and it works flashing firmware using a USB cable. And a good start would be, of course, just to try if that method works for you if you have the Anit A8. I have linked my initial video explaining this method up here. However, you might be one of the unlucky 20% Anit A8 users or less, or you might, for example, have the Ender 3, which does never come with a bootloader installed, and so you have no option for USB flashing. But how do you know that? Well, mostly because you get a weird error while trying to upload, like, not in sync. So let's talk about how you can fix a missing bootloader. Starting with the prerequisites to get everything set up on your side correctly, so you can continue step by step. First, you need to download the Arduino IDE software from the arduino.cc homepage. The latest version used in this video is 1.8.9. Also, I am always just using the zip version of the IDE. I'm saying this because using the installer version might cause a little different setup that I'm using. I'm not saying that this is necessarily causing issues, but you know, the devil is in the details sometimes. Before the next step, launch the Arduino IDE once, so it will create some of the initial folders in your user profile, which we will need in the following step. Now we need to install the right board definitions depending on your printer. A board definition tells the Arduino IDE how it needs to talk to the printer's hardware and which processor it can expect to compile a firmware for. I have linked the downloads for the Anit A8 board definitions as well as the ones for the Ender 3 in the description. For the Anit A8 board definitions, copy the hardware folder to your document's Arduino directory. For the Ender 3, copy the Sanguino folder to your Arduino hardware folder. If the hardware folder does not exist, just create it before copying the Sanguino folder. Next up is what kind of programmer do you want to use? I made a very detailed video how to fix a missing bootloader using an Arduino Uno and some jumper wires, which is one of the valid options. So if you want to follow that, just watch the video I've linked up here. But there's also two other simpler options, so stick with me, I'm showing you both options in detail now. Let's start with the first option, which is called the USB ASP Programmer. 
It's a tiny USB stick like adapter that plugs into your USB port and on the other side it's connected to the display cable and then you will need an adapter from 10 pins to 6 pins that plugs into your mainboard. Now you might ask in case of the Enid A8, why do I need an adapter from 10 to 6 pins when the cable is perfectly fitting into the mainboard connector? The reason is simply that the programmer does use a different pin layout for flashing the firmware than the connector on the Anit A8 mainboard, so you need to use this adapter, otherwise you will simply fail uploading the firmware. On the Ender 3 it's a little more obvious that you need the 6-pin connector because there is a 6-pin counterpart on the board for attaching the programmer. The package of USB ASP plus the adapter will cost you between 9 and 13 bucks on Amazon. Links are in the description. Now with Windows 10 by default the USB ASP is not recognized correctly so we need to install a special driver to make the USB ASP visible to the Arduino IDE. The easiest way to install the driver is using the Zadig tool. I've put a link to the download page in the description. So start by first plugging in the USB ASP into a USB port of your computer. Then open the Zadig tool. Then select options, list all devices. From the list of devices, find the entry that is called USB ASP and select it. And then from the list of drivers available, select the Win USB driver and click on the Replace Driver button. After the installation has completed, you should get a confirmation pop-up. Now finally check that the driver is correctly installed by right-clicking the Windows Start button and selecting the Device Manager. In the Device Manager, there should be a USB ASP entry in the Universal Serial Bus Devices section. The second option you have as a programmer is the so-called USB Tiny ISP. It's very similar to the USB ASP, but it has the advantage that it can be used with the USB cable from the printer, which gives you a little more distance from PC to printer. It's also available on Amazon, but it doesn't come with the 10 to 6 pin adapter by default, which you will need to purchase separately. To install the drivers for the USB Tiny ISP, go to the link in the description, which takes you to the Adafruit driver download page. Install the driver software and make sure that the USB Tiny ISP option is selected. After this, the USB Tiny ISP should be visible in the device manager in the libusb win32 devices section. Now you are ready to connect your board to the programmer device, but please turn on the printer's power if you are doing this while all the motors and fans are connected to the main board. Because otherwise those will be powered from the USB port which might be overloading your programmer or your USB port. For the ANIT A8 plug in the adapter into the middle three pins of the J3 connector. So on each side of the six pin connector of the adapter there should be two pins visible. The connector's open slot at the 10 pin side should be facing towards the LCD connector. On the Ender 3 just plug the adapter into the 6 pin ISB connector located next to the display connector. A flashing LED on the board should indicate you that you connected the USB programmer correctly. Don't worry, if you still plug the cable in in the wrong direction you will get an error while flashing and you can simply turn the adapter around to fix this so you will not break the board. Now you should open up the Arduino IDE from the folder where you unzip the downloaded files. I will start enabling verbose output for uploading firmware in the file preferences menu. Here we select show verbose output during upload and then hit OK. Next you need to select the right programmer device. Depending on the programmer you have chosen, select the right item from the Tools Programmer menu. There's an entry for the USB ASP and the USB Tiny ISP. Now depending on the printer you have, for the ANET A8 select the ANET A8 version 1.0 OptiBoot from the Tools Board menu. Or in case of the Ender 3 select the Sanguino board and in this case also make sure that you selected the 80 mega 12 84 16 megahertz option from the tools processor menu. For the Anid A8 I would strongly suggest the OptiBoot bootloader because it's a lot smaller and you will be able to flash the Marlin firmware with a lot more features enabled 
because sometimes when you have, for example, the auto bed leveling enabled and also you're using another high res display, you will get compiler errors like sketch too big or text will not fit in region text which tells you, okay, this firmware is too large to fit in the flash memory and the huge stock bootloader of the ANIT A8 might be one of the reasons. Finally, open the tools menu again and then select the burn bootloader item. Now in the output section, you should see that the bootloader gets flashed and now you will be able to use the USB cable to flash the firmware to your printer. Disconnect the programmer from your board and also from the USB port. And now connect your printer to the computer directly using the USB cable. Make sure you have selected the right COM port in the Arduino IDE and you should be able to upload a new firmware using the Sketch Upload menu item. Easy, isn't it? Now, if you have further questions or problems, I'll be in the comment section down below to help you. Or you might want to join our Discord channel where we are building a community of experts who want to help each other being more successful with 3D printing. That's it for today. If you appreciate this video, please smash the like button, consider subscribing to my channel to support me creating new content for you, and hit the bell notification icon if you want to get notified every time I post a new video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye bye.